Hello from the Drakensberg chain ladders. We're on the first day of an eight day, seven night trek up on the top of the Drakensberg escarpment. So it's about 3000 meters up there. Uh, and this is the chain ladders, the obstacle before you reach the top on what's actually a very easy way to reach the top of the escarpment. So you uh, can actually just drive up to a car park that's 400 meters of ascent short of the top. And then you've just got a gradual ascending pass until you come up to this point here where you've got some steel chain ladders bolted uh, into the cliffs. But we did have a really good walk up, uh, it's been sunny all day, there's quite a strong wind at the moment, in fact you can probably hear some wind noise coming through the mic, um, but it's been really nice hiking weather, the temperature's quite cool so we've not got too hot getting up here, uh, and we had a nice stop for lunch at a place called Witches, which gives a great view back to the Drakensberg Amphitheatre, which is where we're going to be staying tonight. So from this point, you go up the chain ladders, and then you've got a, a very short walk, really, until you reach the River Tegela, and then you continue onwards and uh, watch the Tegela River plummet off a cliff, uh, the second highest waterfall in the world, Tegela Falls. And from there, we're gonna continue on a little bit further to our camp spot, so that hopefully, tomorrow morning we'll have a good view of the falls as the sun rises. Uh, so that's our, our rough plan uh, and I'll probably do this video just as a, a day all the way through to tomorrow morning so that uh, I can make something of this video because actually sunsets in the Drakensberg can be quite difficult to work because the uh, sun actually sets behind the cliffs so you get very little light uh, actually on the, the on the cliffs themselves whereas the opposite is true in the at sunrise when you can have spectacular lighting on these gigantic cliffs some of these cliffs are a thousand to one and a half thousand meters high so it's a it's a really dramatic place uh, and this is actually the i think 10th time that i've done this route something like that i i usually do uh, workshops with uh, beginner groups. These guys are actually some very advanced amateur photographers who I've been friends with for a number of years so uh, that means we've got fewer porters on this trip uh, and a slightly more ambitious plan than normal uh, which, which is fun for me and I also don't have to do too much teaching which makes my, my job quite easy. Relatively speaking on this trip I might even be able to get some vlogging done. So uh, yeah I, I hope you enjoy whatever this series turns into um, but for today we're going to hike up to the uh, waterfall, maybe have a swim if it's not too cold and then continue on to camp. the top of the amphitheatre now so this is right where Tegela Falls drops off for the first time so we've had an attempt at swimming in the pool that's just at the top of the falls here but actually it was pretty freezing. Alex, uh, the other Alex stayed in there for a while but I, I just splashed in and then decided it was way too cold for me. Um, so we've just been taking some shots here but to be honest the, the light's not that great and as locations go in the Drakensberg this is, uh, this is a 5 out of 10 I guess. 
So we've got plenty more to look forward to, but actually sunset's only an hour or so away now, so really we need to, to get cracking to our camp spot, which is just over the hill over there. So we've not got far to go, but we do need to um, make sure that we're going to be somewhere for sunset, because there's just an off chance that these cirrus that are above us now are going to light up, and obviously we want to be at a good viewpoint for that. Here's a potential sunrise spot for me tomorrow. There's Tegela Falls in the middle there. Not too much water in it, but enough to make it a feature in the image. And the Sentinel in the background and framed by these fantastic cliffs. So because I've shot a lot of the main viewpoints here before, this is a potential option for me tomorrow morning. One of the problems I'm always going to have now when I'm shooting the Drakensberg is I've done so many trips here that I have shot many of the classic scenes at the most dramatic sections of the Drakensberg that I've wanted to and in some pretty special light. And so I have to keep an eye out for, for new scenes that I haven't shot before. Uh, and this one here maybe has some potential. Um, so what I'm actually doing is using photo pills to check where the sun is rising. Uh, and actually I'm struggling to get a really accurate uh, compass set up on my phone, so uh, it's not uh, getting it perfect, but the sun's going to rise somewhere in the direction that I'm pointing. So obviously, compositionally, that gives me some potential uh, for a shot in this direction. So this is a, another shot that, that could work tomorrow morning. The other was back uh, looking down to Gala Falls through, uh, through a gap back there. There is some fantastic colour in the sky now. This is looking into Lesotho. But in terms of focal points, it's a little bit difficult in that direction. And we have these cliffs here on the left, but as you can see, no color above them. So to find a composition here that felt balanced would be quite tricky. What I really need to be is on top of one of those hills in the distance. But obviously with the time I've got available, that is not realistic. So this may be one that I just pass up for another day. The sunset came and went pretty quickly and uh, as you can see it's now dark. We've got most of the tents up. Alex is still up on the hill trying his best to make the most of the last light. But I think what I'm going to do here is, uh, is get a tent shot like Joe is doing. I've just got a diffuse light set up at the apex of my tent there. So it's quite unusual to be able to balance that with some really late colour in the sky. So that could be a uh, a nice shot to, to get to make something of the day but of course we are very focused on sunrise tomorrow morning so we're going to have some dinner and head off to bed I think. Good morning on our second day in the Drakensberg. This is looking towards the eastern buttress where you can just see the early glow of pre-dawn starting to emerge. Uh, so we got up at 10 minutes to five, which is long, long before sunrise, particularly given that we don't have too far to walk. Uh, but everybody's pretty excited this morning because we have an inversion, um, which are a regular occurrence in the Drakensberg, but far from guaranteed and particularly good in this location we're at now, so it should be a good morning. That's uh, this time in the morning. that's reasonable. <coughs> oh, we are we've just got up to the viewpoint, looking again towards the eastern buttress. So we've got the whole group here. Unfortunately, the inversion, which you will hardly be able to see, is uh, is pretty patchy. So around the uh, the Tegela Falls area, there's no inversion at all. It's been staved off probably by this wind. Uh, so we're trying to decide what to do, but I think the answer is probably going to be to go a bit higher to where we were yesterday evening so that we're looking towards the eastern buttress as these, uh, these colours come through um, and where the inversion is a little stronger behind it. Uh, that's probably going to make for better images. Again. Yeah. <laughs> I'm back where I was yesterday looking at this view across the Tegela Falls over there as ribbon-like as it is at the moment um, but I just love the way this uh, 
cleft frames the view. And we do have some nice foreground here in these uh, sort of crazy paving stones. It almost looks like columnar basalt. Um, but whether I'll include them, I don't know, because if I just walk to the edge here, you can see it's quite dramatic the way the, uh, the cliff drops off here. So it's tempting to just ignore the foreground and shoot a vertical frame with all of that depth leading down to the bottom of the ravine there. Uh, and then if I just change the ISO quickly, you can see uh, some nice colors starting to appear in the sky. The guys are variously dotted around the edge here. So I am set up now and I've decided to stand right on the edge here and you can actually see that I'm including the bottom edge in my composition here and that's actually so that I can crop in afterwards and include as much of the bottom as possible. So I'm intentionally including it knowing that I'm going to crop it out. That's something that I will do with distractions in the frame sometimes just to make sure that I can make the sort of largest frame possible um, outside of those distractions. Um, and a, a five by four is probably going to work better here anyway. Um, I'm shooting at F8 because it just gives me a faster shutter speed. I don't need additional depth of field in this case. And F8 is an incredibly sharp aperture on this lens. And so my camera's timed out, so I will just uh, reset it. I've, I'm actually in a custom mode at the moment, my bracketing custom mode. Um, so if I just change the aperture here to F8, and I'm just looking at the histogram as I do this, uh, and then that's my middle exposure, so I'm losing some of my highlights there, but that's gonna give me all of the detail I need in the shadowed areas of the foreground. And if I half press the shutter, you can see the darker exposure it's going to take. Uh, so I have already pre-focused, so if I just take that now, then it'll take three frames in quick succession. And that's my job done. So the view from here is, uh, is, is pretty good. The, uh, the sun is gonna come up behind the eastern buttress, I think. Um, and with me, I've got uh, Joe and Brian, who are set up just to my left. Um, so I think at this point, uh, with the twilight glow very much gone, uh, we need a bit of color from sunrise to light up these cliffs. So it might be that my earlier frame is the better frame, but I'll wait now and see what the sun brings to the scene. Here comes the sun, and this is a difficult decision to make because the moment the sun gets above the horizon, it's gonna to start to catch these clouds, which gives me some compositional options. Um, but also, if I change the ISO again, I can get my shot that I planned yesterday evening, and actually these grasses would make a really nice foreground, although I'd need to be shooting it more like 35 millimeters. And here it comes, so I'm gonna to have to rush now and focus on getting my shots rather than vlogging. Um, but those are my two ideas to shoot this, uh, this wider view here as well, of course, the one that I was shooting earlier. Um, so I will probably try both. Believe it or not, I'm shooting this scene a matter of minutes after the previous shot. The sun here rises incredibly quickly when it's above an inversion, and so you have to work rapidly to make use of the light. So I've actually switched to shooting a portrait frame here because the, uh, the shadow that you see here on the left is very harsh with my previous composition, and so I'm just creating some additional interest in the foreground and putting that cliff uh, further to the left of the image just to make a more coherent composition with the contrast as it is now. Because these trips are more than just uh, trips up a hill to take some photos, they're very much uh, you know, week-long adventures, I like to get photos that illustrate that, that to a degree, and I actually really like this scene here. 
looking towards our tents with the eastern buttress behind. The sun is right there, so um, it's difficult to include the sky. So I'm probably going to try shooting this twice. Uh, once with uh, the top edge of the cliffs out of the frame, so a panorama framing something like this. Uh, and then once allowing the sky to blow out and I'll probably play around with using my hand to block the sun to uh, improve the contrast because you get a lot of uh, veiling flare as it's called so like a general flare over the entire image when you're shooting into the sun so taking some frames with the sun blocked out uh, can improve the contrast but sometimes you want that light bleed so I'll work with both uh, the one thing I can't do is uh, show you me doing that because uh, the contrast is, is too much and I obviously need both hands to, uh, to do that hand technique. Um, but I think that could be quite a, quite a nice image. Now shifted position once more to look over the inversion down here sort of breaking up and this particular cloud keeps changing so rapidly uh, that there's lots of potential here to make a nice composition as the cloud changes but of course you do need to be quick to respond. So this is actually the valley that Tegela Falls feeds, that's uh, the falls over there so it drops down here and feeds into the valley. It's Royal Natal National Park down over there. So this is probably going to be the last scene that I try and shoot uh, before we head back to the tents and have some breakfast and pack up. And that was the end of our morning shoot on day two in the Drakensberg. Uh, that 24 hour period was actually the least productive we had on the whole trip. Uh, so I've got some uh, pretty cool things to show you in the coming videos. Uh, and after that we did of course go back to our tents for our breakfast and coffee as we do every morning. I think I mentioned that in every video actually which shows just what a priority it is. But anyway, uh, I thought I'd do a quick image review, uh, emphasis on quick this time because I don't want to make the video too long uh, and some of these images are um, not really intended uh, to be their, their very best necessarily. Starting with this one, um, just a record shot really of uh, the tent and this rather late light hitting the clouds. Uh, if I were to analyse the composition here, it's probably a bit tight at the bottom here. It's a 50-50 horizon, which can work really well actually uh, sometimes, but certainly not in this case. You just end up with two halves of an image uh, with this big negative space in the middle. So the connection between these two lots of clouds is, is really not clear. So uh, compositionally not that great, but uh, a nice record shot all, of, all the same to capture that first evening in the Drakensberg. This was the uh, frame looking towards Tegela Falls that I was happiest with by a long way. Um, this uh, this central glow really makes a feature of the waterfall and you can see it actually stands out beautifully uh, despite only being a trickle compared to what it can be. Um, and I just think the lighting here is uh, is pretty ideal, nice and soft, directional with, with warmth in the right areas uh, and the framing works well too for me. Um, that said, I, I may come back and, and shoot this in, in more favourable light still, I'm not sure. And this was the sunrise version. Um, you can see how I'm trying to keep the highlights where the sun strikes the rocks and it's ended up just looking a bit dull everywhere else where there's no uh, colour in the light. But also you've got the light striking this rock on the right which really draws the eye out of the frame. In the previous shot it just isn't that much of a distraction. Uh, but there it really is. So this is uh, is not nearly as good in my opinion. And then I decided that I was going to reframe um, and already the light was quite contrasty at this point. You can see my foreground here isn't particularly well organised. Um, I could have spent more time getting that right but I think I knew at the time that this wasn't going to be a keeper. Um, one thing that is quite interesting for me is this bit of geometry just here. There's almost a checkerboard going on so I wonder if there would have been an idea around using the rock faces in that way but certainly as it stands there's 
too much contrast it's very flat and I don't even like the, the colors to be honest these rich yellowy golds uh, it's not really the kind of palette that I like uh, so that's one for the bin uh, and then there was this one uh, I have quite a few images looking down into these valleys um, both from this trip and from previous trips and this perhaps isn't the strongest of them but nevertheless I think uh, compositionally it works quite well and it does give a sense of of scale and wildness. I've actually just noticed this little uh, highlight creeping in at the bottom of the frame there so I'd probably need to sort that out um, but otherwise I'm I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, this uh, this wisp of cloud it would be nice if it was broken up a bit more but otherwise uh, not a bad shot and then I thought I would finish by talking about my favorite image from the trip which is actually this one um, so you can see uh, compositionally I've actually eliminated this cliff on the right and obviously this frame here I'd have to deal with this flare um, but I've eliminated that cliff in the final composition because I think it gives um, a greater sense of focus to the tents here. It stops the eye drifting out the frame on the left. Um, and uh, I think uh, for, for people who haven't seen that the cliff ends just here, by eliminating um, where it terminates, you give the suggestion that this cliff might continue, which I think makes the image... Um, conceptually stronger uh, and I quite like the light here too I, I like that the fact that the uh, the sky is blown out and you've got this lovely light bleed coming across the cliffs and it has a an airy light feel which um, can be quite hard to capture in the Drakensberg the uh, the ground at your feet can be quite dry and you have these massive open areas so an image that gives a sense of that um, is is actually not not that easy to come by so I think this is certainly one that I'll be dropping into my portfolio and it's the it's my favorite shot from that 24 hour period uh, so please do tune in to the next video where we will be going to one of my favorite locations in the whole Drakensberg Fangs Pass um, and also have a look at my website if you'd be interested in coming on a trip like this next March I will be doing a trip that is very similar to some slightly different locations where we'll be backpacking uh, with a team of porters. Uh, and incidentally, the reason why the porters aren't uh, in this video and aren't in many other videos is often they hike on ahead and, and set up the tents for us. So uh, I'm not deliberately eliminating them from my videos. Uh, that's just the, the way it is. Um, so yeah, I hope you can tune in for those uh, those coming videos.